with the last uh, talk from the session is faster faster algorithm for isogeny problems using torsion point images uh, by Christoph Perkin. Of course, Christoph will present. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, thank you to the organizers and thank you to Craig for introducing a lot of stuff that I won't have to introduce in, in uh, details. So uh, I don't think, uh, well, I think all of you are well aware of, of, of this, right? The, the day quantum computers are built, we uh, will need something to replace this good log factoring. And one of the directions that is currently um, pursued is, is isogeny based crypto. Okay? So uh, the protocols include the hash function that was actually proposed uh, much before um, SIDH, a key exchange, SIDH signature, as you saw uh, yesterday. Um, and one of the selling points of, of this area is that classical and quantum algorithms still require exponential time. Okay? So in this talk, I uh, want to uh, partly challenge this. So in this paper, we present uh, new attack techniques for problems that are close to uh, super singular isogeny field and protocol. So I'll, I'll uh, make more precise what I mean by close to and let you judge whether this is close enough for uh, presenting some, some uh, threats uh, in the near future. All right, uh, so that's the outline of my talk. I still want to um, recap a little bit the uh, SIDH protocol uh, and then um, I'll go to the core of this paper. Uh, and, and Alright, so isogeny problems, uh, in case you weren't listening uh, to the talk, they're about uh, computing some, uh, some, some, some maps uh, or isogenies between curves uh, or some variants of, of this problem, as we'll see. Um, so the, the kind of uh, pure problem would be you're given two curves, you have to compute an isogeny between them. Uh, there, there are several variants, there are several other problems that, that are given to this one. Uh, for example, uh, computing the anamorphism ring of, of a random curve. So an anamorphism is just an isogeny from a curve to itself. And um, the, the, um, this set as a ring structure. So computing this, this ring, for whatever that means, uh, is, is equivalent to uh, computing an isogeny between two curves. Uh, breaking this uh, hash function by Charles Gorin and Lauder is also equivalent to that. And uh, as you saw yesterday, uh, breaking uh, our second signature scheme with, with Stephen and, and Javier is also equivalent to that. However, uh, breaking SIDH is not equivalent to those problems, as far as I know, uh, unless, of course, they're all easy and free time. <laughs> um, okay, so here's uh, SIDH. Uh, you choose a prime P. You choose, um, so it, the formulation here is slightly more general than what you saw in the previous talk. So you choose two integers, n a and n b, uh, and I only require that those are uh, co-primes to each other. Uh, I just would pick a cyclic subgroup g a in, in the <coughs> n a torsion. Uh, so this defines an isogeny in the sense that um, the, the kernel of the isogeny is, is this cyclic subgroup. Uh, you take the curve E0 modulo GA, so that's easier of, of GA, if you like, in, in uh, correct notation. And, and then she sends EA to Bob, or, or the J variant of EA. Okay, Bob proceeds similarly, and uh, so they exchange uh, EA and EB. EB, and then similarly to uh, if you had you'd like Alice to do some additional computation here, and Bob to do some, some additional computation here, and, and so that they agree on some common uh, shared key which uh, will be, uh, I mean, it's natural to expect this to be uh, E0 modulo GA, uh, GB, right? Uh, so the sharp key is, is, is this curve here. Uh, you can also rewrite this as uh, EB, EB modulo uh, phi B of GA or EA modulo phi A of GB. Uh, the issue here is that, um, well, GA is known to Alice, but it's not known to Bob. And phi B is known to Bob, but not to Alice. So we, we had a problem here. And, and that was the core idea in, in uh, Java de Feo project, uh, how to actually uh, compute this, right? So to achieve that, they use a, a, a clever trick. So uh, this, group, this group GA, uh, if, you, if you choose a, a basis for the DNA torsion, 
uh, it, can, it can be uh, defined by, by two uh, integers, alpha a and, and beta a, uh, modulo and a, uh, such that at least one of them is, is co coprime to an a. So you get, you get ga generated by, by this point here. And then uh, in the protocol, in addition to revealing the curve, uh, Bob will also reveal the image of P A and Q A uh, through uh, its isogeny phi B. Okay? And now when Alice has to compute phi B of G A, what she just has to do, uh, she, she computes uh, the point uh, alpha A phi B of P A plus beta A phi B of Q A. And because uh, an isogeny is, is a homomorphism, a group homomorphism, uh, this will give a generator for, 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 for this uh, subgroup here. Okay, so that was the clever idea in, in, um, in um, Java Diffio protocol. Uh, to make this a little bit more efficient, uh, they actually um, choose some restricted set of parameters. Uh, so as, as you saw in the last talk, uh, here you choose uh, two to the sum integers uh, for NA and three to the sum integers for NB, where uh, both of them are roughly equal to square root of P to balance the security. Uh, and so P will be something like this, uh, so that actually those points here, uh, the NA torsion and the NB torsion are actually defined very square, right? Uh, there is, uh, it's, it's not strictly necessary, so you can relax this. Uh, you pay a huge factor in practice in, in efficiency, but it's still going to run time. All right, uh, so here's the protocol again. Uh, the black information here is what's public. The blue information is what's known to Alice, and the red information is known to Bob. So that's the uh, shared key. So as you see, in addition to uh, EA and EB, uh, uh, you actually get those, those extra points here, okay? Um, so SIDH uh, doesn't rely on this pure problem. It relies on some very special problems for a different kind of reasons. So first of all, we choose a very special prime, a Mersenne-like prime, right? Uh, you want NI to be equal to 2 to the E, or 3 to the E, 3 to the E. Uh, and also, um, so you get P of, of a special form here, right? So that's, that's one reason. Second reason, uh, well, there are roughly P over 12 super singular invariants, but because NA is roughly square root of P, uh, there are only roughly square root of P choices for EA. So EA is not randomly distributed, okay? Uh, and thirdly, and most importantly for this talk, uh, you do get this extra information. So, so uh, you not only give them easier an EA, uh, but you also, well, and, and the degree, uh, degree the, the degree of the isogeny, but you're also giving essentially the image of, of, uh, of a wall and B torsion, right? Uh, you give them actually uh, 5 of PB and 5 QB, but from there you can, you can recuperate the image of any P in there. Uh, so it was uh, well understood that uh, point 2 here would improve uh, the kind of uh, trivial attack meets in the middle attack where you uh, start from two curves and, and perform some random uh, well, kind of uh, tree tree based attacks. Um, uh, but points one and three are essentially not ignored in all, all papers. So in this paper, uh, what we do, we, we kind of relax point, point one, uh, and, and, and this allows us to exploit point three. And I want to stress that relaxing point one. Uh, actually makes sense also if you want to, to deal with, with this, this issue. So there are good reasons for doing that, except just making uh, my techni techniques work. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so let's, let's go to, to the attacks now. Um, so, so remember, our motivation is, is an attack on Java Diffier protocol, so I'll change NA and NB for N1 and N2 just because you can, you can revert them. Uh, it doesn't change. Uh, my, my discussion. So you co you, the goal here is uh, given an isogeny of, of given degree n1 uh, between e0 and e1, you also given those two curves to compute this isogeny, sorry, given, given those two curves and degree to compute the isogeny given also the action of phi on, on an n2 torsion. Okay. Uh, well, how useful is this additional information? Well, if, if, if the GCD of n1 and n2 is not 1, then uh, you can you can use this information trivially to uh, recover uh, part of the kernel of the isogeny. So you're essentially recovering part of phi one. Okay, uh, but of course in, in, in the parameters we have prevented that experiment. So that that won't be exploitable. 
Another observation is, uh, well, there has been some papers, including in this conference last year with Christine and, and students, where we replace this, um, these two points that are supposed to be given by the protocols by other well-chosen points, so that eventually we, we grab a little bit of information and we repeat and repeat, and eventually we actually get all the world private key. But this is kind of cheating in a sense. We, I mean, it's, it's an active attack, so we, we're not following the protocol. So in this talk, what I want to show is some techniques that will allow to deal with, with passive attacks. So assuming there is, uh, we follow the protocol, uh, and, and Eve is only eavesdropping, uh, what can she do uh, to actually uh, break those patterns? Um, as a warm-up, I won't I want be um, targeting uh, exactly an ice aging problem, but I will, I'll come to it later. Uh, I want to target a slightly uh, perhaps easier problem a, a priori, which is essentially the same problem but for endomorphism. Okay? So let P be a prime, let E be a super similarity to curve defined over P square. Uh, let phi be a non scalar endomorphism of E. Uh, and uh, with smooth order n1. So let n2 be another smooth integer, such, such that it's core prime to n1. And let p, p and q be a basis of e of n2. The only difference with, with the uh, SIDH setting is that there is only one curve, and, and phi is, is an anomorphism, except of being an isogeny between two curves. Okay? So uh, my attack uh, assumed that we have uh, we know a subring of this anamorphism ring. Okay, uh, we either know it because it's it's uh, easy to compute, or because for some reason it's given. Okay, and uh, a simple example where, where you may know such such a subring is is the scalar multiplication. So for any curves, you know that uh, scalar multiplications are anamorphisms. So uh, this, this assumption here is not, not very straight. It is, it's, it's not an assumption, but it's, it's a fact in, in, in this case. Okay, so the problem I want to target here is uh, given a curve E, given P, Q, and, and the images of P and Q through this isogeny, uh, endomorphism, sorry. So uh, the degree of phi uh, given our compute phi. Okay, so suppose we're ignoring this additional information, so what's the best attack then? Yeah, well, the best attack is, is this tree-based approach that I've already uh, talked about. So you start from, from E0, and, and uh, you're building a tree, two trees of, of isogenies, uh, each of them of, of degree uh, roughly square root of N1. And, and if, if you do that, well, there will be a collision in the middle. So, so the, the cost of this strategy is roughly uh, square root of N1. Right? So the attack technique I will show you now will actually provide square roots here on this. So heuristically, it will give a n1 to the power of 1 form. OK. Uh, so here's a sketch of the algorithm. Uh, in the case where uh, this are uh, the subset of, of anamorphism, the subring of anamorphism that, that I know is, is just a scalar multiplication. So this is, there's no restriction here. Um, so we know phi on the n2 torsion. Okay? Uh, so this, this allows us to, to, to deduce um, the action of, of uh, is, is dual on the N2 torsion as well, uh, just because N2 is co-prime to N1. Okay? Now if you have uh, the action of phi and the action of, of its dual on the N2 torsion, you can, you can just compute uh, phi plus uh, phi dual, uh, and that gives you the trace. Uh, the trace of phi actually modulo N2. But you can also bound the trace uh, by uh, two square root of the degree. So assuming that N2 is bigger than Two square root of n one, which is the case, by the way, in, in all, all the, the parameters chosen, uh, then uh, you actually get trace of phi not only modulo p modulo n two, but you actually get it over the integers. Okay. Well, the core trick in, in, in this attack techniques is to consider uh, this anamorphism. Okay. So it, the anamorphism ring is, is a ring, right? So you can you can compose it additively and multiplicatively. So you have phi. So uh, if phi is an anamorphism, then a phi plus b is also an anamorphism um, for a, any a and b that are integers. So you can evaluate psi on the n2 torsion. You don't know psi, right? Because you don't know phi at this point. But uh, since you know phi on, on the n2 torsion, you can also evaluate psi on the n2 torsion. Okay. So the attack will try to find a and b uh, such that the degree of psi which uh, will, will be equal to this formula. You can ignore this, this for the moment. 
such that the degree of psi will be equal to this product, n2 times n1 dash. Where n2, well, n2 is, is given uh, in, in the problem, n1 dash, we want, the, we want it to be as small as possible and as smooth as possible. All right? Uh, so in, in, in this formula here, just notice that the degree of phi is known. It's given in the problem. In the case of phi, we've computed. So, so this is essentially a product forming A and B. And we'll see later how to solve it. Uh, then uh, the isogeny, well, the anamorphism I can write uh, because it's of degree n2 and 1 dash, I can write it's a composition of isogenies of degree respectively n, n1 dash and n2. Okay? And then uh, because I can evaluate psi on, on the n2 torsion, I can actually recover uh, the kernel, well, the part of the kernel of psi that corresponds to n2. So this gives me uh, the kernel of psi n2, and then from this I can use Velus formula to deduce. Um, psi of uh, n2. Okay, so at this point I've I've got uh, e. I've got an, an, an isogeny uh, psi of n2, and I'm looking for another isogeny psi of n1 dash that will will go back to e. Okay. Uh, uh, well, this isogeny of degree n1 dash. So I can just use the meet in the middle strategy, and and the cost of this meet in the middle strategy is essentially square root of n1 dash. Okay. So if we manage to get this efficient enough, and if if n1 dash is square root of n1, then we get the square root speed out of the type high parameters. Okay? So, uh, sorry, I forget this last step. So, once you have found uh, n1 dash, uh, psi n1 dash, you have, psi, you have this component and this component, you get psi, and, uh, and if you want to recover phi, you just compute psi minus b uh, divided by a, uh, and, and you go essentially. Okay, so that's the sketch of the algorithm. So I just want to give a few words about how to actually find A and B here, such that uh, this quadratic form here gives, uh, is equal to N2, which is given, and N1 dash, which we want as small and as small as possible. Okay, so here's uh, this quadratic form again. Um, and, uh, well, it is, uh, of course, well known that uh, this, this could be modeled as a two-dimensional lattice. So a uh, solution to degree psi modulo uh, equal to zero modulo n2 will, uh, will form a two-dimensional lattice. And then uh, we're looking for some element in this lattice such that the norm here uh, is as small as possible. So you just use a lattice basis reduction uh, in dimension two is just uh, go so you can use uh, so, so very efficient. And, and, and then uh, once you have computed a reduced basis, we search for a uh, rather short vector such that n1 dash, in addition to being short, it's also smooth enough. Okay, so I don't I don't have the time here to get the heuristic analysis it's in the paper, but it shows that we can expect n1 dash to be as small as square root of n1 is premised, and 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 this shows that uh, if by revealing this extra information by using it, we actually get a square root speed up over its trivial algorithm uh, that ignore it entirely. There's some parameter restrictions to be honest, but. Uh, anyway. All right, so this is just solving a problem that you might not be so interested in, right? <laughs> so uh, now let's go to the real thing. Uh, we now have a prime P. We've got uh, N1, N2, um, two integers, Dr. Prime. Um, E0 is a super similarity curve over P square. And now we have an isogeny from E0 to E1, uh, and we're given the degree, okay? I take some extra assumption. I assume that I know our zero and our one um, in so subrings of, of both the anamorphism ring of E zero and, and E one. Um, and I actually have to take an extra assumption here. I assume that R zero contains a little more than scalar multiplication. So assuming that it contains a scalar multiplication is no restriction at all because this I know. Uh, but this this poses some condition on, on E zero. Uh, we'll see that, in fact, in the implementation, that uh, that condition now are always fulfilled. Okay, the problem we want to solve here is we're given some uh, e, well, all those parameters, e and one, uh, those two curves, um, r zero, r one, and the image of phi one uh, on the wall into torsion, and we want to compute um, uh, this this isogeny this time. Okay, uh, the best previous algorithm again. Uh, well, you have those two curves, and you kind of build two trees from, from the two curves until you, you get a collision. So again, the cost of the best algorithm, if you, if you, ignore, uh, if it, you ignore this additional information, would be something like uh, square root of n1. 
Okay, uh, here's the general idea of, of uh, our attack. We'll actually be reducing to the previous case. Um, so remember, I assume that uh, I, I knew some 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 part of the NMRF domain of easier, not just experiment patients. So let's set up the uh, non-scalar uh, anamorphism of E0. Uh, then I can consider an anamorphism of, of E1 uh, defined by um, the, the composition of, of uh, the dual of E1, theta, and, and phi1. That's an anamorphism of, of, of E1. And uh, observe that uh, because you're given the action of, of phi1 on the N2 torsion, you can deduce its action on, on, the, uh, uh, yeah, on the dual of, of phi1, and, and then you know theta, so you can actually uh, evaluate phi on, on the wall into torsion. So we're in the setting of, of, of the previous case, right? We now have an anamorphism of E1, and we can apply the techniques that I, I just showed in, in, in the previous case. Uh, this gives, gives us essentially phi. Uh, so um, at this point, we want to deduce phi 1 from phi, right? Um, there is a little bit of, of work to, to be done, but it's not too complicated. So you, uh, you compute the intersection of, of the kernel of phi with, with um, uh, the N1 torsion on, on E1. And then uh, the kernel of, of the dual of phi1 is a cyclic subgroup that's contained in this one. So, it, it, so if this guy is a cyclic subgroup, you don't. In general, you don't expect to be a cyclic subgroup, but you expect it to, uh, that there are not too many uh, possible options. So you can just uh, do some exhaustive search to actually recover the, the real one. So once you have found this, you, you actually uh, use phi1 and phi1 hat, and you don't. Right? Uh, now, um, impact on key agreement protocol, I guess that's what you all care about. Uh, well, first about this, relaxate, this, this assumption that I made. <coughs> uh, remember, I, I need to assume that uh, R0 contains a little more than the Skyrim creation. Uh, well, observe that uh, in, in the um, in the SIDH uh, implementation that I'm aware of, and in, in actually the NIST submission, uh, they're using J, J uh, equal to 1, 1, 7, 28. Uh, that's a very special curve for which you not only know uh, a small subring, you actually know the, the wall anamorphism ring of, of E0. And not only you know the wall anamorphism ring, but it's also very special. So it contains very small elements, uh, in particular degree 1 non scalar element. So both aspects, the fact that we know it entirely, and the fact that there are small elements in there, both aspects are useful to make our attacks more efficient. Uh, we don't actually uh, break uh, SIDH parameter, I'll come to that. But we do obtain heuristic polynomial time algorithms uh, to recover uh, the wall key, uh, assuming the parameters are a bit stretched. Okay? So if, if J is, is, uh, is as they use in, in their implementation, uh, then I actually need uh, n1 to be uh, p square and n2 to be at least uh, n1 to the 4. Uh, in, in that case, actually, uh, the, the additional information provided by the action of the isogeny on this n2 torsion is sufficient to recover uh, the isogeny in polymer time. And, and uh, there, uh, there is another attack in the paper where I relax this assumption, but I, I take even more, even uh, over, more overstretched parameters. Uh, and, and again, I get uh, some premium time uh, key recovery. Remember, in, in SIDH parameters uh, for, from uh, Craig's code, typically they would choose uh, N1 and N2 roughly equal to square root of P. Uh, so I haven't found a way to uh, apply my techniques in this setting, but of course, um, I don't know, uh, maybe next year, uh, some people, I mean, there are more clever people here than I am, so maybe next year there will be uh, somebody presenting uh, some extension. Uh, All right, uh, so to conclude, um, uh, isogeny problems in, in using ICDH are uh, special in many senses. Uh, it was already known that uh, the small degree could accelerate the attacks, uh, but there are other properties that haven't been exploited so far. So one of them is, is the use of um, I mean, the fact that you're actually revealing strength emission. So what we, we're doing here in this paper is we show that revealing this extra information is not innocent. So potentially, uh, at least there are some isogeny problems that are very close to the ones appearing in those particles, for which uh, it actually leads to um, uh, green time key recovery. Okay. 
So in my opinion, ICT-based crypto is very, very appealing. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, it's still a very recent area, and, and uh, I hope um, I hope the uh, submission to this will encourage more uh, classical and actually quantum cryptosis uh, on, on these problems. Okay, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Let's uh, thanks to the speaker again. <laughs>